Hello everyone and welcome to the ACNC's webinar for today. The topic being administration costs and charity spending as you can see on your screen. My name is Matt Crichton. and I'm from the Education and Guidance team here at the ACNC and joining me to present today's webinar we have a very special guest, the Assistant Commissioner himself, Mr Murray Baird. Thanks very much Matt, glad to be here. Before we get into the um, the content proper, just a few um, admin bits and pieces to, to cover off at the beginning. Um, if you do have some trouble with the audio today, you can dial into the webinar using your phone. In the um, confirmation email you got when you registered, there should have been some instructions in there with a, with a number and an access code um, with which you can use to, to call into the webinar if you're having trouble with your computer's audio. It sometimes happens. Um, also, we will be answering questions as we go throughout. Um, so if anything pops in your mind, you want to ask about it, feel free to ask a question using the GoToWebinar navigation panel on your screen there. There should be a, a little um, option in there um, with which to answer questions. We have a couple of colleagues, Chris and Simone, in another room answering all your questions as they come through. And just on the questions, um, if they are really specific about your charity, it may be best that you give us a call, um, call one of our advice services staff, and they'd be able to provide you with um, probably a more tailored answer than what we can give in the webinar. So we'll try our best to answer all the questions as best we can, but if, but if they do get a little bit specific about <clears throat> bits and pieces with your particular organisation, it, it may be that we'll um, uh, advise you to, to, to give us a quick call and we'll be able to talk you through some of the issues. And just finally, if you prefer to hold off until the end, um, that's well and good too, because we'll have a Q&A session after the formal presentation of the content. And that's your chance to um, shoot through some questions at that time. And Murray and I will do our best to answer them live. If we don't get to your questions, because we have quite an audience today, never fear, we will make the effort to get back to you, but <clears throat> get in touch with you, get an answer to you via email later on. Okay, all that out the way, the admin stuff is done. So now on to the admin costs. Let's have a look at what we uh, will cover in today's webinar. First, we'll have an explanation of administration costs. It's a common term and it's one that is maybe a bit nebulous and people might not um, have quite a grasp on it. So we'll touch on what it actually means. Look at how admin costs are unavoidable. The concept of costs not going to the cause is, is often talked about spending too much on administration, charities' responsibilities to explain costs, some difficulties identifying administration costs, and finally, we'll just give the ACNC's take on administration costs. There's quite a bit to get through, and you're probably sick of hearing my voice for the time being, so to kick things off, I'll start with the concept of admin costs, administration costs, Murray. Can you give us... Um, just an overview of, of what we're talking about when we, when we say administration costs in a charity. Yeah, thanks, Matt. I, I think when we talk of administration costs, they can mean all things to all people, but uh, we think generally in terms of the overheads uh, of an organisation. Right. Um, some might describe it as the indirect costs. Uh, some might say, well, there are frontline uh, activities that we deliver on, but there are the backroom uh, activities or the preparation activities which we separate out. So we think of uh, the frontline delivery as one thing and then the, the backroom stuff as the administration costs. Right. Now, I, probably the best way to think of it is some typical examples. So you might regard your employee salaries and other expenses as overhead or volunteer expenses, your costs of fundraising, uh, your advertising costs, your, your um, accommodation and infrastructure costs, such as your rent and your electricity, your phone, your internet, your water, your insurance, um, your equipment, uh, your um, computers, your paper, your stationery, um, your training. Right. They might all be regarded as administration costs. It's quite broad and varied. Just the second dot point on the slide says here that um, it, it covers a wide range and will differ for every charity. Um, in saying that, many of the examples would be common across all charities, the ones that you just mentioned. 
And we want to say here that administration costs are, in a sense, unavoidable. Um, could you explain how they are unavoidable? Um, we talk in terms of uh, delivering uh, charitable services uh, to beneficiaries. But of course, to do that, we need to have um, uh, an investment in the tools by which we deliver. So uh, every charity will have uh, expenses to get to that delivery. Um, people and goods and services are not free for charities. Of course, yep. <laughs> they have to pay out uh, for those things yep. uh, to bring together the resources to ultimately deliver. Now, uh, uh, typically, when we think of delivery of charitable services, we think of, say, food and accommodation for people experiencing homelessness or, or medicine or vaccines and medical supplies for people with illness, um, uh, supplies for food and clothing for disadvantaged people, um, uh, money to research diseases, um, uh, money to assist people in natural disasters. But, of course, we have to gather those resources and we have to deliver them efficiently. Yeah, right. And that involves overheads. Yeah, and this um, last dot point here that um, charities need to employ people and people need to make a living, it, it's um, that's a, a reasonable expectation, I guess, for, for people that are involved in the charity sector. Yeah, although charities do rely on volunteers, uh, sustainability often means that you'll have to employ people. Mm. And people who choose to work for charities are often making some sacrifices, but they do need to survive, pay the bills. <laughs> yes, uh, and a fair request. People, people uh, sometimes we, we survey and say, should, say, directors on a board be paid, a charity board? Mm. And, and we sometimes get the response, no one in a charity should be paid. Right. But... But that means that we're not going to have uh, charities that are sustainable uh, if if we starve our workers. Yeah, it's it's unrealistic to expect that every charity would operate solely by volunteers. And when you think of the, the breadth of the organisations involved in the charity sector and some of the, the really difficult technical work that they do, you, you have to expect that people will be employed. Yeah, and every charity really needs to work out what the right mix of resources is to deliver the most impact. And sometimes it will be a fully professional service, others it will be a mix. Yep. And then there are a lot of charities, especially the extra small charities, say 30% of our charities register, which will rely entirely on volunteers. Yep. Uh, we don't say that any is more legitimate. Mm -hmm. We simply say every charity must work out what's going to deliver the most impact. Yeah, right. <clears throat> just before we move on, just this, this concept of it being unavoidable, even the smallest charity with uh, fairly small operations would run into an administration cost at some point, whether that be the cost of photocopying something or yeah. the cost of a phone bill. Yeah, or the cost of driving, uh, the volunteer driving to somewhere to, to right. do the work. Sometimes those things are absorbed by the volunteers, yep. and that's fine. That's part of their contribution. Uh, but but you're right. Inevitably, there will be a piece of paper to write on, a computer to use. That's it. So I find it very difficult to imagine a charity where there is no administration costs, but sometimes they are hidden. Yeah. Uh, and, and another example is the charity that says uh, every dollar goes to the front line. Right. Um, often that means someone else is paying for the infrastructure to allow every dollar to go to the front line. Right. So one might query whether that really is an accurate statement. And just on that, <clears throat> nice segue there, Murray, with um, this concept of costs not going to the cause. Um, you mentioned that uh, some charities, some organisations will claim that, that every single dollar is going to the cause and a common um, complaint or criticism or maybe even point of frustration amongst members of the public is that their donation isn't entirely going to the cause and some of it might be sucked into admin costs along the way. Um, what, what do you say to this, this thinking about? Well, things? I think every step along the line to delivering impact is going to the cause. It's right. on the pathway to the cause. 
And to say, well, some bits aren't for the cause uh, is, um, I think, a, a, a narrow way of looking at things. Right. Uh, so uh, we would find it often very difficult to say uh, something is not for the cause. And in fact, if it is not for the cause, uh, probably something's going wrong in the charity. Right, right. Um, what would be an example? If it is simply going into people's pockets without them putting any effort in at all, okay. um, that might be an example of not going to the cause, but then that goes to the heart of what, what it is to be a charity. Yep. We talk of charities having a sole purpose of doing good, of, of doing public benefit. But everyone along the chain contributes to it. Right. The receptionist, the person who answers the phone, they would all say, yes, I am contributing to that impact that we ultimately achieve. Of course, those people play an important role in the organisation, even though sometimes in the public consciousness and maybe on the part of donors, it appears as though those costs aren't frontline costs, as you describe them. They're still... Um, essential to the charity being able to carry out its operations and, and its mission. Yeah, and uh, I've seen uh, in the United States some receptionists and other people in organisations wearing T-shirts that say, I am overhead. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, 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 and what they are making is a fair point. People might accuse them of, of being overhead, but they are part of the delivery. Yep, yep. So I think the second point is one to um, j just bear in mind if, if this is – one of the issues with which you're struggling when you're thinking about your contributions to the to charities that you support is to think of donations as contributions to the charity's work rather than them being um, quarantined as different parts of a charity's operations. It's frontline, it's, it's backroom staff and all of that. The donations are contributing to the, the whole approach of the charity. Yeah, sometimes donors will say, I want my donation only to go to a particular project or only to go to the front line. Um, and it's almost as if it's suggesting that there are no uh, overheads involved in getting that uh, yeah, donation right. to that front line. Uh, so perhaps in a mischievous way, sometimes when I give, I will say, I want this to go only to overheads. <laughs> okay, I want yeah. it to go only to administration. And the point I'm trying to make is I know that's important. Yep. And, and I want to perhaps balance up some of the uh, th those others who are saying, I only wanted to go to the front line. Right. But having said all that, administration costs and, and the amount um, that is directed towards what we may commonly define as administration costs um, could uh, conceivably be too much. It's finding this line of what is too much spent on admin, if we can even um, draw a border around the costs that are directed at admin and, and figure out what admin costs are. But this idea of spending too much on administration costs is a real concern, though, isn't it? I think certainly the, the public would say uh, we want to make sure that the funds we are giving are used prudently. Yep. Uh, but who are the best judges of that? I think they are probably a prudent board uh, that it has a good idea of what they're trying to achieve yep. and responsibly assessing how best to achieve it. Uh, so um, what is too much? Too much is where it is not a reasonable expenditure to achieve the charitable outcome. Right, right. Right. Um, and some people will say, well, it, how much is that? Is it 5%? Is it 15%? Is it 30%? Mm. And at the Charities Commission, the ACNC, we resist these rules of thumb. Right. Because if you're delivering for a popular cause um, close to home, uh, you might find your overheads are very low. Right. But what if you're delivering for a, an unpopular cause a long way away uh, where both the cost of raising the money and the cost of delivery of the service uh, are just higher yeah, right. because it's a lot tougher. The nature of it. Mm. And, and so uh, who are we to say one size fits all? Mm. So we look to the question of a responsible board to take these things into account. Uh, we don't want wastage. Yep. We don't want private benefit, but we do leave it to the discretion of a board uh, how they use their scarce resources to get an outcome. 
And that's what the, the points here on the slide point towards. Um, the first one here, just quickly, ratios and percentages may seem useful, but there are difficulties with them. And that also it touches on what you just spoke about, but also the, na the different nature of charities and the work that they do means that some charities will need to spend a higher percentage on administration costs than others. For example, um, let's say a, a local soup kitchen that has the costs of the van and, and some of the ingredients and, and making the, the food to deliver to people in need might not have the same administration costs as, say, a medical research charity that needs to have a lab and some um, equipment and uh, medical scientists to, to carry out the work. Just the nature of the two organisations are such that the percentages will likely be different. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I I quite like a story uh, that, that someone tells of um, choosing a local doctor. Right. Uh, you move into an area, which, which medical practice will I go to? And I don't ask, what are the overheads here? I really ask, what are the mortality rates of this doctor? <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, what we really need to be asking is, in all the circumstances and in the nature of this charity, uh, what's the best outcome that can be achieved yep. uh, rather than you know, what are the overheads? And just before we do move on, you did mention the idea of um, the ACNC not, not um, you know, condoning wastage or private benefit. How do we draw the line between that which is a reasonable administration cost, the, the likes of which we've described a fair bit already today, and that which probably does cross the line if, in fact, that line is so difficult to find? Yeah. I, I suppose it's one of those things that you know it when you see it. Um, you know when someone appears to be acting irresponsibly or appears to not be acting in the best interests of the charity. Right. So if we find that money's going in and then it's uh, it's going out to um, uh, personal expenses, uh, which is, is often some of the scandals that occur, uh, people are benefiting themselves. Yep. They're spending the money on their on fast cars. Um, <laughs> we would say that is leakage yep. to private benefit. Um, I think it would be true to say also that if the whole of the organisation appears to be administration with no charitable impact, right. we would be asking questions. We'd be saying, are you serious yeah, about right. this? Do you really have a charitable intention or do you have an, an intention to build an empire uh, which is going to benefit the people involved uh, within the organisation, not the ultimate beneficiaries? Right. Because charity is about public benefit. Yep. Uh, it's about identifying how the general public uh, um, should benefit from this activity, not from the people within the charity. And if a charity can um, point to um, their expenses and and explain them, justify why they were spent for, for the charitable purpose and in which way and, and how it came about that they made the decision to spend this money, then it's likely that that would be, um, we touch on again, a reasonable board, it would likely be um, part of the, the charitable, the costs pursuing the charitable purpose. It's where a charity can't do that or can't reasonably explain these costs or reasonably justify where they get into trouble. Yeah, I would, I would say that sometimes there are some flags that would have you question whether these expenses are legitimate towards the charitable impact. Right. Uh, and once the flag is raised, we would go to the board and say, can you explain what you are doing here and, and why these expenses are here? Now, some will be obvious. Yep. If, if it is going in straight into their pocket without any effort being put in, yep. uh, uh, it might be very easy to ask the question and, and find that there is no satisfactory explanation. Yeah, right. But at other times, the charity will say, can we explain the particular uh, idiosyncrasies of delivering this sort of um, a charitable outcome, yep. uh, and uh, if it is within the range of prudent decisions, mm -hmm. of good governance, uh, we will accept that. Yeah, right. Okay, so it is, in, in summarising the, the content we've got on the slide here, it, it is difficult to come up with a, a hard and fast line and um, a ratio, a percentage that will 
um, fit all charities. It really does depend on the nature of the organisation, the the governance by which the expenses are being um, used and and how a charity is using their funds to pursue their, their charitable purpose. Which brings us to a point on reporting. We can all look at charities' financial statements and annual reports to have a look at where the money is going and, and what percentages are being spent on what aspects of charity operations. But as the heading of this slide suggests, there isn't any standard reporting, a prescribed way in which charities must report. And again, troubling, no common definition of administration costs in accounting terms. Yeah, and in fact, um, you can decide what your uh, categories are in your accounts and you can place expenses in categories uh, almost in a discretionary way right. uh, as to how you regard those expenses. Um, I went to a, uh, a an activity conducted by Miles McGregor Lowndes at the uh, Queensland University of Technology Centre for Philanthropy. Um, and uh, what we did that day is take a set of charitable uh, activities and then determine how we should uh, work our accounts okay. to represent those activities. Yep. And uh, by using Australian accounting standards, mm -hmm. uh, some came out with a ratio of about 15%, some about 50%, right. and, and some up in the you know, 70 and 80% area. And this is using s standards that um, all organisations across the country are, are welcome it, to use. Are welcome to use. So, uh, frankly, the accounting standards we have at the moment provide very little assistance if someone wants to determine administration costs. And on a, just on a practical level, how would this look for a charity? So, for example, if, if Charity A has some uh, costs, let's say, running a vehicle. They've got some insurance, they've got some regular petrol payments, and Charity B has the same costs. Does this mean that the, the two charities could conceivably report those same costs or very similar costs in different ways in their financial statements? Absolutely, and, and, and legitimately so. Right. Um, they're, not, they're not hiding anything or doing anything nefarious, it's just... Yep. All above board, it's just they can be categorised two different ways. Yeah, and I, I think the temptation, because uh, observers put so much emphasis on this, uh, what, is your, what are your overheads, yep. what are your fundraising costs, um, the temptation is to try to put it into an area which is not administration ah, um, okay. so that your ratio looks better. Right, um, right. And uh, that can often distort the way that you record things. Uh, it can uh, avoid transparency. Right. Uh, so uh, there are some real challenges then yeah. uh, in the accounting standards not being able to demonstrate uh, a consistency of administration costs. Yeah, particularly when it's all legitimate too. I think that's yeah. the point. If um, if there was some dodgy behaviour underpinning some of this, it would be different. But the point is that using the standards um, applied by the, the, the Accounting Standards Board, you, you can legitimately categorise them in a bunch of different categories. Yeah. Um, just the third dot point here on the slide we've got here is that charities should consider, and this is a <clears throat> uh, an acronym, NSCOA, as we like to call it here at the ACNC, which stands for the National Standard Chart of Accounts, which um, is an attempt to try and standardise the way in which charities can report um, a whole range of costs, not not just administration costs, but the way in which they can um, uh, do their accounting um, according to a, a more um, uh, streamlined way. Yeah, the, the National Standard Chart of Accounts is simply a set of, of, of headings uh, in your accounts uh, with definitions attached to those headings. Right. Um, it was originally designed to help charities in their acquittals to government departments. So uh, the government department makes a grant mm -hmm. and then requires you to acquit on that oh, grant okay. and to explain yep. that you've used the money responsibly. And some charities were reporting that if they had, uh, say, uh, scores of grants during the year and each government department was requiring a different form of acquittal, right. a different set of headings, 
um, they were running the risk of spending more yeah. on reporting <laughs> of course, than yeah. the grants were worth in the first place. Yeah. And so uh, originally coming out of the, the Queensland University of Technology now um, under the jurisdiction of the ACNC, a, a set of uh, headings and uh, definitions was developed which is accepted by various state and federal government departments as an appropriate way to report. And, and that sort of a methodology, that set of uh, headings and explanations uh, can contribute right. to consistency and comparability. Yeah. It doesn't solve the entire problem, but of course it provides some sort of uniformity with which we can we can try and look into some finances and make sense of the financial statements that we see on the register. Yeah. I, look, I think we really still have a long way to go uh, to find a way of consistently reporting uh, the finances of charities yeah. uh, so that there is greater transparency. Uh, in some jurisdictions, they have created uh, accounting standards that are sector specific. They are oh, okay. for charities, yep. um, but uh, we're not at that point at this stage. Right. And just the final dot point on this slide is that notwithstanding the difficulties in trying to examine an organisation's financial statements and where their money is going, the information we do have on charities is worth looking into and it is available freely on the ACNC charity register. So if you were um, interested in looking at the, the spending of charities in the way that they've reported them in their financial statements, you can do so by looking at the ACNC charity register and, and having a look at the statements that are submitted by charities themselves. Yeah, and you'll certainly be able to get an indication of the scope of a charity's revenue uh, and the scope of a charity's expenditure uh, to get a, a general idea of the size and stability and sustainability uh, of a charity. Even small charities, that's less than $250,000 revenue a year, will give you uh, some... Um, line items yep. from their accounts, yep. whereas over $250,000, you will get the financial statements yep. in more detail. Uh, some will be reviewed, and then the larger ones over a million dollars will be audited. Yep. Uh, so you do get a, a pretty good picture of what's going on in that charity. And we do recommend doing the research. If someone is looking to donate and, and isn't sure or, or is concerned about administration costs and, and everything that comes with it, it is a good uh, spot to begin. Now, what can charities do? This feels like it's been one-way traffic up until this point, talking about how the public wants to view administration costs and how can the public find out information and, and is the public desire for information about admin costs even a fair query? Having said all that, where does charities' responsibility lie within this discussion on administration costs? Well, the, the responsibility is simply to use their resources responsibly yep. to an impact. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, there are some traps to fall into. If the charity sector uh, put the overhead ratio as a primary measure of efficiency and effectiveness, I think that they are creating a false expectation. Mm -hmm. um, people are giving because they trust the organisation, they're related to the organisation in some way, or they admire the impact the organisation right. makes. Yep. Frankly, I don't think a lot of donors are poring over accounts, uh, <laughs> yes. checking ratios. Yep. I think they're saying, is this a badge I trust? Are these people I trust yep. or do I admire the things that they're achieving? Yep. So uh, my counsel to charities would be to say, think about the best way of communicating your effectiveness. Right, okay. Uh, and often that that will not necessarily be in your accounts as much as in your stories. Okay, yep. Uh, so in your annual report, for sure, put your numbers in. But tell us the stories. Right, right. Uh, tell us how things change, how lives are changed yep. by the work that you do, how the public has benefited from yep. these things. So um, more storytelling would be my view on, on how charities should uh, go about things. And 
just on this second point here, charities should show how reasonable administration costs are um, uh, central to supporting the work on the ground. Yep, admit it. Admit that we need to spend money to be effective. Yeah. Uh, don't don't be, hide from it. No, don't hide from it. Don't be coy about it. Uh, be quite open about it. And uh, as I've hinted at before, say to your donors, uh, will you help us with the overheads? Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> that is the fuel that allows us to deliver. And it's one thing that I, I think typically, historically, charities haven't been great at because of the, um, let, let's say, the baggage or the stigma that comes with the this concept of administration costs. It's something that has historically been something to um, almost shy away from, not not embrace it as part of the operations of an organisation. Yeah, or, or, or even perhaps more dangerous, feel that they have to keep cutting and cutting and cutting your, their administration uh, to uh, project a persona of efficiency. Yep and find that they just don't have enough administration to do things effectively. Um, if you keep just whittling away at your administration, you could get into a, uh, a, a doom cycle. Yeah, right. That, that means you can't achieve right. uh, your impact at all. Yeah. So always a danger. It's very good advice. <laughs> it's one of the things that charities I don't think see coming is, is that doom cycle as you describe it, that, that the more you you feed into it with that rhetoric, that the more difficult it can be to, to, to break from it, yep. like a pit of quicksand or something. <laughs> Let's have a look at um, a summary of, of the issue today before we do get into some questions. And we are looking forward to taking a bunch of your questions, which um, are coming through thick and fast, but just summing up the issue, let, let's go through these dot points. So number one, Murray, we have here, we understand the concerns with administration costs. Wherever we go as a regulator, people ask about administration costs. Uh, and uh, particularly if I spend time on certain radio programs where uh, shock is more important than right. information, <laughs> um, uh, I will be pressed very strongly. What are the ratios? How much is 15%, right. 20%? Yeah. <laughs> and, and really, uh, I, it reflects the concerns people have. Yep. Um, my response is almost inevitably, it really is the wrong question. Right. Uh, the r right question is what's reasonable in all the circumstances. Um, so, uh, yes, we understand the concern. We want to shift the focus to impact and effectiveness. Right. And the second point here, we expect charities to operate responsibly. Um, and most charities are responsible with money. Yeah, it's important to say overwhelmingly uh, charities have good governance. Yep. It's an essential element of being a registered charity. And the danger of us occasionally uh, tracking down someone doing the wrong thing is that uh, that becomes the narrative. Yeah, but, sure. But that is a very tiny part of the narrative. Mm. And we wouldn't want it to colour the terrific work that charities are overwhelmingly doing. Yep. The third bit we just touched on before, that charities should be open about their spending, explain their costs through, as you said, their stories. Yeah, yeah. don't don't try to suggest that you have no overheads when everyone knows you do. <laughs> yeah, um, just say, yeah, for sure, the, these aspects are important in our delivery and this is why they are important. The public... This is back on to the, um, the public desire for this information is that the members of the public should consider administration costs in the context of the work of the charity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, realise that different charities and charities are so diverse will have uh, different ways of organising. So, um, uh, again, no one size can fit all that's charities. Right. And that's not to say that the concerns about administration costs are illegitimate. It's just to say that this this desire for a one size fits all approach is, is probably the, the wrong way to go about it. it absolutely, yeah. And this last point, occasionally some spending on administration is excessive. Yeah, sometimes we'll look at a charity and say that that's not quite right. It doesn't seem to add up. Yep. Uh, where is this money going? Uh, it doesn't seem to be represented in impact. Uh, it it may well be represented in people creaming off charitable funds for their own purposes. And when that happens and the ACNC is made aware of it, we can 
look into that and, and act where, yeah. where we can. That'll be a cause for inquiry. Yeah. And it'll be a cause for the board to explain how it's spending its money. Yep. Okay. There's a lot in that today and a lot for you to take in. We're getting questions um, pouring in. So we'll try our best to get to as many of your questions as we can. But as I said at the beginning, if we if we miss yours, we promise we will get back to you via email. And if your question is a little bit too specific, it's about your organisation, some of the aspects of your organisation in particular, it's best to give us a call on 132262, one of our very knowledgeable, intelligent, charismatic staff members on the phone will be able to talk you through all your issues for your charity. And, and committed and passionate. Committed passionate as well. <laughs> um, one question that has popped up, Murray, and um, I, I know we've touched on it, but it, but it is worth reiterating, is on ratios and percentages. Although we have said that um, it is really difficult to, to, to find, um, you know, the, the holy grail of the one size fits all, at the extremes, there are flags that um, would indicate um, certain wrongdoing, right? So when we say percentages, 99% on administration costs might be a flag. It might be a flag, and yeah. that's all. Um, right. It, it might be a very red flag. <laughs> uh, and, and again, we will simply go back and say, why are you spending so much uh, without any frontline delivery? Yep. Um, and we will ask for an explanation. Yep. We generally, uh, speaking of flags, we generally talk of charities swimming between the flags. Right, right. Uh, are they within the range of conduct that a yep. charity ought to be involved in? Mm -hmm. If they're outside the flags, we'll start by blowing the whistle. Right. Um, we'll want to know why, and we will try to get people back between the flags. Yep. Uh, if they insist on staying out there, which seems to be conduct that's inconsistent with being a charity, mm -hmm. uh, that's when we will uh, say perhaps you shouldn't be on this register yeah. because this register uh, is a sign of good governance and and we're forming the view that you haven't, you're have you not holding the wheel yep. and you're not steering in the right direction. Right. A couple of questions have come through which um, are similar but from, from two different angles. Um, someone from the public has said, when donating, they notice a lot of charities claim to have little to no administration costs. And then on a similar note, someone from a charity has asked that in their promotional material, they feel like there's a desire to claim they have no administration costs to solicit the donation that they're after. Yep. So from from both angles on, on the same theme, what do you say about the organisations that are claiming to have no administration costs or very little? Well, beware the organisation that has no administration costs um, because there's no accountability, there's right. no supervision, uh, there's probably no infrastructure and no ability to deliver. <laughs> okay, yeah. However... All the bad uh, things. <laughs> yeah, yes. Some organisations will absorb that with volunteers, volunteer right. time, volunteer resources, volunteers uh, chipping in the petrol, or whatever it is. Yep. Um, so... Uh, other organisations will say, we have a donor or a fund that pays the overheads. Okay. My personal preference would be to explain uh, where the administration is coming from and admitting that there is such a thing. So instead of saying uh, absolutely every dollar goes to the cause, mm -hmm. you might say because someone is meeting our administration costs, we are able to ensure that your donation right. uh, is delivered to the beneficiary. Right. Um, or because we are volunteers and contributing our time and resources, mm -hmm. we can ensure that your donation uh, goes to the beneficiary. Yeah. Um, so be honest about the fact that there is admin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just who's who's paying. Yeah, yeah. Pla place it in the right context so the, the, the donor, the, the, the member of the public can fairly assess what's going yeah. on. I suppose the charity who's worried that uh, the, the, the next charity is, is getting uh, donations because they're able to say absolutely no overheads has to make a decision whether right-thinking people mm. will realise that, yeah. that there are administrative costs. Are there really people out there who would uh, assume that there, that there are no administration costs? And secondly, that if there are no administration costs, therefore that charity must be more efficient. Yeah, right. We all know that. 
um, you often need capital and investment to get an outcome. Yep. So sometimes uh, inefficiency will arise from the smell of the, the oily rag. Right, right. <laughs> but if you fuel an organisation appropriately, you will, in fact, be more efficient. Yep. It all depends. <laughs> it all depends. And just on that note, actually, um, on in a similar vein, do you think the um, do you think the charities should be more trusting of the public to be able to understand that administration costs are simply a part of operations, and rather than as we described earlier, not shying away from the nature of administration costs, just being upfront and open about it, and trusting that the public will know what they're talking about. Yeah, Matt, I, I do understand the fact that uh, there are so many people out there. The I suppose the spirit of the times is that overheads are bad. Uh, that I can appreciate it's all very well for me to say uh, here from the ACNC, um, educate your donors, educate the public. Yep. But I do realise that that um, is tricky. Yes. <laughs> um, and that, that so many people uh, are convinced that administration costs are the measure of efficiency. Um, but perhaps I put, out, I put out a plea to charities to be part of that s educational solution as well. Yep. And just one more, we've probably got time for, for a couple of, or one more question. Um, this one is uh, taking a, a slight veer to, in another direction, but focusing specifically on um, the salaries of staff members, and in particular, some of the executive staff or the higher ups, the boss, mm. the CEO, the the board. Um, is there a way to calculate fair remuneration for people in the in such positions? We've had a question from a couple of charities that are struggling with this concept. They they understand that there's a need to have people in those positions and, and qualified, capable people, but. Resources, of course, are thin and, and they don't want to be seen as spending too much on yeah. administration. Well, um, in theory, it comes back to the question of the board deciding what is appropriate to get the right person to get the right impact. Right. And we all know about uh, uh, monkeys and peanuts. <laughs> but um, I, I would say to a board in grappling with this issue, um, what are the benchmarks? What would the outsider... Uh, uh, looking in, say about this this salary, yep. um, not just the, uh, the the covetous person who wishes they were on that salary, mm. but the right thinking person right. looking in. Yep. Um, so uh, there will be some charities where you do need a, 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 a top gun. Yeah. Um, medical research might be an example. Yeah. Running a, a, a big hospital or running a university. You are not job. going to find someone uh, on the award yep. uh, to be the vice chancellor. Yep. So um, you really need to look at your segment, uh, look at comparatives. Yep. And I think we would be asking the board to justify why they have set the salary at that level. Right. Okay. Now, in some cases, it, it would be important to go to a consultant yep. and, and say, um, what is reasonable for what's the range here? Yeah, right. At other times, you might use some of the excellent um, annual surveys yep. of what a, a CEO uh, okay. ought to receive yep. in these circumstances. Yep. Um, or at other times, you'd be saying, this is how we set it according to this benchmark. Yep. Um, reasonable in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it sounds uh, vague, yeah, yeah. but that's what we're getting at. So it's it's funny in, in the idea of um, admin costs not having a one-size-fits-all approach to, say, ratios and percentages, yep. the reasonable in all circumstances can, in lieu of that, be our one-size-fits-all <laughs> because it does yeah. apply to most charities, well, all charities in all, in all circumstances. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, be reasonable. <laughs> yeah, 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 being reasonable is, is, is the key. Um, and, uh, you yeah, know, I think, I think that's probably the best way to that look at it. And it's probably a good... Um, spot to end on and we've already taken 45 minutes of your lunch break on a beautifully sunny well it might not be sunny everywhere i just realized <laughs> but it's sunny here and i'm sure everyone is um as hungry as we are for our lunch break but we thank you very much for your time today we always appreciate your attendance at the webinars and we will um, encourage you to 
join up for future webinars. But if you did want some more information about this topic, we have lots of resources on our website. On the screen here, you can see a few acnc.gov.au is the homepage and a few resources um, that would be considered handy on this topic there. Um, just a note, you don't need to scribble these down quickly. We will um, send you a follow-up email with all of the links and all of the resources in the next day or two. And um, just for your reference, we will put a recording of this webinar on the website as well. So if there are any colleagues or, or friends or co-workers that you thought this might have been useful for, it will be available on the website later on. And also stay in touch with us um, via email updates in the commissioners column from the website there. We have lots of web guidance, video content, webinars such as this, and you can find um, some advice for your charity, the specifics of your organisation from our advice services team who are available on the phones at 13 22 62 or email advice at acnc.gov.au. And we're big on social media, those links down there. And just before I do let you go, Thank you for your attendance today. And if you have any feedback um, specifically about the webinars or other educational materials, send us an email at educationacnc.gov.au. And just before you do close off, when the webinar ends, there will be a short survey. I think it's only two, uh, three questions off the top of my head. We really appreciate you just taking the 10 seconds or so to fill that in because it does shape the way in which we approach our webinars and, and how we can improve and get better. And we're always looking to improve and get better as we should be. Thank you very much for your attendance today. Thanks to Chris and Simone who have been answering all the questions as we've gone along. And thank you, Murray, for being able to shed some light on this tricky topic. Thanks, Matt.